All right, well, these are the boards that we were making on the pick and place machine about three weeks ago before we had that pull pin failure. This is a clone of Bartring's uh, Gerbil port over to the ESP32. Uh, this is, a, you know, naturally a socket for a dev kit one. That's what I'm using on this project. And this board will take a 24 volts and it has a switching switching uh, regulator here that takes it down to five and then the the uh, dev kit handles the 5 to 3.3 SD card. Uh, this is a microchip 23017 16-bit uh, port expander. And I have this configured up to do uh, four axis simultaneous and uh, spindle control. So uh, this went together pretty well. Um, I have opted or am I a big convert over to these things. These are uh, JMC integrated step servos, it's a NEMA 17 version. So it has a uh, all the drive electronics up here, uh, an encoder back here, um, and what you end up supplying to this up here is uh, pulse direction enable, and then there's a, there's an alarm, and then there's also a statusing to tell you that you're actually at the right step. It has a RS232 port here to do some configuration internal. And this will take up to 36 volts. We're running at 24 volts today. Um, and what I have is I have one wired up right here. So all we need to do is to, we just, uh, this, this particular design has some MOSFET, MOSFETs down here to do some level conversion to provide the uh, plus five uh, switching over to the, to the input for the pulse in the direction bits. And I'm running at 24 volts right through over to the motor. So what I'm going to do is I have this uh, ESP32 configured up to run a Telnet port. So what that means is that if you Telnet into port 23, you can type in uh, global command right there. So that's what I'll end up doing. I'll spin this guy up and we'll go ahead and show you that it's working. And the uh, beauty of these motors here is that they, they, uh, they spin really fast. They're really high torque uh, NEMA motors. Um, I'm using these on my Hyatt machine, for my CNC machine in the garage. And I just went ahead and whipped up this little project because the circuit boards over at JLC are relatively inexpensive. I think I got these, I probably got about 10 of these boards shipped to the United States in a week for about $38. These are 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. I opted two layer board, I opted to do uh, red this time just to be a little different. They soldered up great, so let's uh, spin this motor. All right, well, let's uh, telnet into this thing, and we will um, show you what's going on. So we're going to ask for a status, and we're in hold, so we'll send it to Control X. And you'll see that. Here are the, uh, let me make this window a little bit bigger. These are the settings that I have in there and the things that are of interest are these numbers right here. This is the maximum millimeters per inch, 4,000 millimeters, uh, what is that, per, per minute. Do so these things really go fast? Now these are unloaded, you know, naturally you're not going to get that kind of speed if you have a loaded platform, depending on what the mass of the platform is. But we'll go ahead and do a G1 F100 and we will rotate the X axis, which is what I'm on. And you saw there that that's how that's uh, X in one direction. Here's uh, X in the in going back. So let's uh, let's kick up the speed. We'll go up to F one thousand, and we'll do ten rotations. Okay, so that's at a thousand, and then we'll go back, and then here's F two thousand. Okay, so that's doing 100 rotations. Uh, here's F3000. And finally, we will do F4000. So you see these step servos are really quite fast. And because they are actual uh, doing uh, encoder feedback, they're quite accurate. And if they get off track, if they get off track at all on the 
um, the motion, if there's a little bit of overthrow, overplay, it, it does correct that. If I were to go over there and twist that shaft uh, and let go, it does go back to the correct position. So what I've done on this board is I've created this four port, this four axis machine uh, that also can do spindle control and that the spindle control can use, be used as a fifth, fifth axis or as general I.O. or anything else for that matter. So if I wanted to do some kind of automation tools with this, I can easily use that. There is a web interface that uh, the port of Gerbil has involved in this. Let me see if I can bring that up here. Let me go over to Gerbil here. Make my window smaller because I know you can't see it there. So this makes a uh, connection over to the board. And this is just giving you a graphical interface to actually do things on here. These types of things. And uh, here are the raw commands. You can send over regular commands. Uh, this is the current status. Here's where we are in X, Y, Z, and A. And since there's, a, there's no SD card in this board, but if you wanted to, you can upload uh, files over to the to the SD card and then you can actually have it stream the um, the uh, machine code into the Gerbil processor itself. Uh, let me see what else was there. Oh, there's one, one last thing that's really attractive about using the ESP32 is that it's running free RTOS and it runs, Ger it runs Gerbil on uh, and it's also two processors. So there's two 240 megahertz uh, ARM-like processors and they do shared memory. And so the way that BART did the port is that Gerbil runs on one of the cores and um, in the other core he runs the web interface and anything else that, that needs to get done. And because it's running free RTOS, you can select which core you want your task to run in. So if I want, do want to add an interface to this, a graphical interface or a touch screen, um, I will have the luxury of doing things in a free RTOS world as opposed to trying to figure out how to intertwine this with the performance and not affect Gerbil. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.